My next guest. Uh, my next guest is he, well, he's a personal hero of mine, a member of the Velvet Underground. He's also recorded a wheelbarrow full of solo albums. We couldn't quite find out how many. I think it's about 20. Maybe he'll tell us. But a small wheelbarrow full of solo albums. And he's been an inspiration to musicians for the last 30 years. He composed a piano recital at the age of eight, and he's still planning to do a symphony. Please welcome John Cale. John Cale. Hi, how you doing? Very well, thanks. Good. Glad to be here. Look, people come on. Some people come on with autobiographies, which are cut and paste jobs, which is two photos of someone and a little person. You know, I'd say this is a, this is a work of art, John. This befits a man from an artistic background. This is a proper proper book. There, that took three people to work on that. Yeah, the yeah. designer and it's Victor Bockris and myself. Yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, you did really write, write it. It's not one of these oh, chat to Victor for a couple spoke of spoke it, spoke it to Victor, transcribed. And tell us about it. Is it, is it the whole story from, from birth or from or just your musical that? No, it's all the way from Wales. It really yeah. describes what it was to come out of Wales in the yeah. 60s and go to London and go to college at, at Goldsmiths. Yeah. And, but all the time knowing that you were headed for New York and how are you going to get there? Yeah, you, you know, the whole story. Hooker by crook. But I was flicking through it this afternoon and there's a lot of stuff in the 60s, but that's, that old cliche of if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. But you plainly do, whilst parting a lot. How come you managed to piece it together, or did you just ask a lot of people? No, well, v Victor knew where all the bones lay. I mean, he'd written yeah. some pretty notorious books himself on, on the period and uh, on some of the characters. Mm. And really what, what he helped me with was to avoid going where other people had gone. And, right. and really starting with, with, with Wales was really very important because that, that was really the background for a lot of, of the stuff that came later, the mistakes and the successes. Yeah. Is it, I mean, you steeped in the musical background in Wales. Is it, from the, my, know, my the family and the choir and everything, is that, were you... Well, my, my aunt... Did you love it or was it forced upon you? Is it something, that's what I'm saying, in Wales, is it just, you have to do it or it, is it just there in the... Well, it's your childhood, the, it's your yeah. family, and you, you learn what you learn. And yeah. uh, my aunt wrote, um, We Keep a Welcome in the Hillside. So that she had a variety show and every, there was this yeah. dichotomy of uh, fighting, well, do you want classical music or do you want the entertainment world? Yeah. And I was very nervous about the entertainment world, but as soon as rock and roll came along, yeah. that was it. And the factory days, which I'm fascinated by because it, it seems, as I said, so extreme. And it seems full on up the whole time that it's artistic and it's strange and it's happenings and it's all of that. Was it ever normal? As in, in that way, was it ever? Did Andy Warhol ever go? Does anyone fancy an egg sandwich? Or you know, do you want to? Yeah. I think that happened late at night, where you're, everybody trooped out to the restaurant and everybody ate everything that was on the menu. But uh, I think you know, if taking drugs is normal, and then, then it was because right. everybody in the world took drugs in those days. I mean, yeah. the housewives in, in the Midwest were taking mothers' little helpers. So you know, what was going on? There was a lot of hard work, and, and sure. people shouldn't l lose sight of that. That it really what paid off in the end was all the silk screens and the, the brillo boxes that were made yeah, yeah. in the space of two or three years. And were you in awe of Andy Warhol? Or did, were you, could you have a jokey relationship with him? Could you he was try and grab his wig off or, you know, could you? Yeah, you, could you wouldn't want to, but you, you could. You yeah. could do it. it <laughs> was he, did he take himself very seriously? No. No, he, no but he, he, very, very mischievous and very, very yeah. generous with, uh, with his ideas. Cool. So, you know, that was, that was the artistic side of New York and really yeah. trying, tr trying to fathom, how do you sell art? Yeah, sure. You know, if I if I started here, I mean, I wouldn't know how to sell art in London. Yeah. But the, in New York, there were power places that you go to. Central Park West, you zeroed you in would, on that, yeah. and the salons and everything else. So yeah. it became clearer as time went on what what needed to be done. But in rock and roll, we were totally yeah. lost. Well, it's a fascinating time, and it's a coincidence actually, John, because I myself, I started out many years ago in my in my own collective in Scotland, up near Airdrie, actually, um, called the Processing Plant. And uh, do you remember the the um, you remember the Scottish um, documentary series, We've Scott the Lot. Do you remember that? Maybe you never saw it. Scott the Lot. It was on very late at night. Anyway, they, they did a documentary on the early days. It, take, take a look at this. We've, we've got a clip here. And that's why I'm here on the outskirts of sunny Edinburgh, visiting the notorious Jack Doherty Processing Plant Group, where various bright young things hang out with Jack himself. Well, let's go and find out exactly what goes on here. Hello. Um, Jack, exactly what is it that you're trying to say or achieve with your work?
uh, oat cake. You're very pretty. Thank you. That was um, happy days. Thank you. Anyway. What was it like? Did you think, oh, there's, a, there's a straight guy coming around to interview us from NBC in a suit. Let's just take him for a ride. You know, was it, was that, it ever uh, you thought of in that way? We didn't really think that that was necessary. I think we were out, yeah. so far out there that by the time you found us, you know, you wouldn't be able to find his way back. Yeah, of course. Well, listen, stay with us. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Velvet Underground in the second half, but for the moment, thank you very much, John Cale. And this okay, in part two, uh, John and Bruce will still be with us, and we'll be joined by international entertainer and style guru, John Shuttleworth. We'll see you there. Welcome back to the show. Still with me, John Cale and Bruce Morton. Lad. Thank you very much. John Cale, well. Now, what surprised me about the Velvet Underground as I was reading the book here, because they were so iconic, was that they never really sold well. I mean, really well, ever. No, they were reissued all over the place. Nobody, yeah. nobody knows where, where they went. I mean, Lou is uh, rancid about it all. I mean, he thinks that a lot more records were sold. And, but I, I, I yeah. haven't seen any evidence of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, everyone I know has got one. So I don't, Not you know, a I million mean, copies. Yeah, really. No. Yeah, because I got we got Billboard the Billboard chart from '67. It must be quite light, quite heat. Where the Velvet Underground number you were number two hundred in the that, top yeah. two hundred for a week. That was considered promotion. Yeah, and then you went up the next week to one hundred and ninety nine. Wow, <laughs> you know, yeah, the dizzying. <laughs> so who was number one? Have you any idea? In no, I um, ooh, I've uh, never even heard of it. It was Paul Moriat and his orc. Wow, <laughs> and his orc. And uh, this is the album chart, singing blooming hits. Now, uh, the influence of Paul Moriart and his orc. Yes. Herb Alpert, eight albums in the top. Eight? Eight albums in the top 200. But the thing that really shocked me, 71 places above the Velvet Underground, the most seminal rock and roll band of the century, was Leonard Nimoy, Dr. Spock. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the same guy who produced Astral Weeks did Len Leonard Nimoy. Did Leonard Nimoy? From, from Van Morrison to Leonard, to Leonard Nimoy. Nimoy. It's a yeah, strange. Yeah. Cap uh, Captain Kirk's got an album as well. Have you heard William Shatner? <laughs> oh, stuff? yeah. Have you heard it? it? Yeah, fantastic. If you could, yeah. Lucy in the Sky of the Diamonds. It's very psychedelic. Check it out. It's very strange. Yeah. So you never made any money out of the Velvet Underground? Well, so I can't say ne no, any no, money, but yeah, I mean, no, no one near what people assume. Would you would. A little bit more influence, but you can't take that to the bank. Yeah. Did you make, yeah. Would you, yeah. Would you prefer the money to the influence, the status, or in the end? Is it better? To well, if we'd had them, I think that we had trouble enough handling the kind of success that we did have, which yeah. was suddenly being on on, on Andy's uh, show and having all the, you know, the publicity that went with yeah. it. So I don't know if you'd had money. I think, uh, I wonder if we'd been around. Yeah. No, it's Wales. You're from, Wales has become very cool. You know, all, the, all the good bands from Wales. A lot of Wales good musical activity. And, yeah. 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 Catatonia, Super Furry Animals, yeah. Manic Street. Not necessarily because of a Welsh element, but I think because all those bands really have something interesting musically to say about what they're doing. Yeah. And that's really... We, we've dug up, just similarly to the, um, <laughs> similarly to the collective, my collective, a, a new Welsh act, which is my current favourite, Bruce. I don't know if you're aware of it. This is um, the magnificent Angela Monkey. Have a look at this. Wow. <laughs> If my wines are close, happy looks up to Natalana in blues of all my God. What is keep you not live on busy flank? Anna, you win me, you not kill you in the bathroom once. Angela Monte. Fantastic. Very wonderful. Very fine stuff. Not in, not in Welsh, in, in Angela's own tongue. That wasn't Welsh? No, I'm not quite sure. That. But you wrote in, you, one of your earliest songs, Ini Dechru Oisital. How's oh, that God. pronunciation? Ini Dechru or the Tile. Yeah, which is what, really biblical because in, right. in, Eng, in, in English it would be, in the beginning there was blank. Right. But in the beginning there was God and God was the Word and word, in the beginning was the Word. So this is in the okay. beginning there was. 
oh. shit and <laughs> and so on. Did it get much airplay? None. And none. How Cur strange, <laughs> curiously enough. How strange that is. Yeah. So where can we next see you play? Um, you're you're over touring. Um, there's, yeah, there's yeah, a few uh, gigs days. in uh, Cardiff, then we go to Cambridge. We start on Saturday in Cardiff, then Cambridge Sunday, then Liverpool, then Glasgow, cool. which I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and is it, what's your current band? It's a trio. It's a trio. Yeah, two guitarists who do a number of, uh, a number of different instruments, and we'll be at the Royal Festival Hall on the 21st. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Nice Thank you. you. John Kell. Thank you very much, John. Okay.